Kitsap County's largest employer is in the midst of a generational transformation. Nearly half of the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard's workforce has only been employed there for five years or less. We'll examine what a surge in hiring has meant for this community, both inside the gates and out of it, on this week's Beat Blast. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to this special edition of the Beat Blast, sponsored by the Admiral Theater. Story number one today, the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard right behind me is closing in on 15,000 employees, the highest number that have worked there since about the Korean War, more than 60 years ago. We talked with Rear Admiral Scott Gray, commander of Navy Region Northwest, to find out why the Navy is bringing on a surging workforce as it counters new threats in the world. When you look at what the Navy is doing today, uh, back in the early 90s, we had about 500 ships. At any given time, of those 500 ships, we had about 100 of them deployed around the world doing the Navy's business. Today, we've got about 287 ships, and at any given time, we have about 100 of those ships deployed around the world doing the Navy's business. So we're doing the same amount of work we always have done, uh, under greater competition from potential adversaries, and we're, we are working our ships and our sailors a lot harder than they used to be because we have fewer number of ships. So maintaining them and getting them into the shipyard and, and getting the ships back out on time and, and forward on the ocean is, is, is absolutely critical to our ability to, to succeed, and the shipyard is, is the linchpin in ensuring that we can do what we need to do. Story number two, between retires and hires, the shipyard has brought on approximately 10,000 new people in the past eight years. Training a large new workforce with only so many instructors has been a challenge that has required the shipyard to think up new training programs, including going virtual. I had the opportunity to sit behind someone for a year and a half, two years, to learn the trade. I came in as a marine electrician. Now we don't have that uh, with the people leaving, and so we had to come up with a different strategy in order to go train our, our workforce coming in. A lot of the kids these days don't have shop classes and industrial classes like we used to when we grew up. So we had to do even basic things like here's a wrench, here, you know, here's a screwdriver, how to go use it. Our mindset had to go and change is that they picked up the basics and then they, they brought us their energy and enthusiasm to bring in technology in. So that's helped us tremendously in the execution of our work. Uh, where we're going to be at in five and ten years is just amazing. The, the future uh, and, uh, and the, the amount of monetary and also time that we put into these folks, this is a generational type of investment. And so am I happy walking out in my twilight? Yes, because I know what we're leaving behind. So the future is bright. Story number three, the shipyard's main job will keep up the Navy's fleet of submarines and aircraft carriers. And following a decade in which much work was behind schedule, the Navy and the shipyard are working to make sure the fleet is on time and ready to go for anything that the world throws its way. A crucial job is blasting and painting those huge metal ships and boats, a job that falls to people like Frank Renouillon. Imagine going into a space that's not designed for human occupancy and shoving us in there and getting work done in an extremely industrial fashion. Like we do some pretty intense stuff in some pretty gnarly places that you could dream up in some nightmares. It's really cool to be able to see your work, your craftsmanship, your, your pride floating out on the water. Uh, I am third generation here at the shipyard. I'm third generation Frank Rubin Renuio at the shipyard. My grandfather was a sheet metal shop 17, retired in the 70s, 80s. My uncle was in shop 64 and uh, he retired in 2012. I hired in 2012, and hopefully I'll retire out of here sometime with all my fingers and toes. I think I was fortunate enough to come in at a time where hard work is still something to be proud of. Um, we're in a digital age, but without, without trades, without people working with their hands and knowing how to put stuff, people can be smart and know how to build things on paper, but it takes people to come out and actually have that craftsmanship, that pride, knowing how, how to actually make things come from beginning to end. Story number four, a hiring surge also has an impact on the Kitsap economy generally. There's more paychecks and more demand for local businesses. But the hiring pool is also shallower when a big employer like the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard gobbles up some of that untrained and trained labor. 
we spent time at Larry and Christie's Bakery, a fourth generation donut shop where business has been rising like the dough in those blueberry fritters. We make all of our donuts from scratch. It's a fourth generation recipe and we still use it today. It goes back to my great grandfather, Vincent. People really love our blueberry fritters and our maple bars. Oh, we love the shipyard guys. They come in, they have donut offenses when they mess up at work, forget their badge, or if they're late. They have to come in and get a couple dozen donuts for the crew, and we just love it. Right now, things are booming, and we owe it to the shipyard, we believe, because it's been a big influx in shipyard employees and we've seen a lot of them come through here and we've had to hire a couple more people order more ingredients and it's been awesome we've lost one or two to the shipyard but it's okay cause there's more out there that want to work story number five Bremerton's always ebbed and flowed with shipyard employment the town's founder William Bremer even took a huge loss buying the land on Point Turner from a homesteader for $200 an acre and selling it to the Navy for $50 an acre because he knew there would be a town on the outside. So what does the future look like for the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard? First thing, it doesn't look to be slowing down any. In fact, Congress is considering a huge $21 billion package to modernize the four naval shipyards around the country. That includes Portsmouth, Norfolk, Pearl Harbor, and its biggest, the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. And second, there's a new aircraft carrier called the USS Gerald Ford. Some call it a super carrier. Well, in any case, it does not have a dry dock yet at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard where it can receive maintenance and modernization work. That project should cost around $1 billion sometime this next decade. In some, Kitsap County's largest employer facing new geopolitical challenges and maintaining a growing fleet is showing no signs of slowing down. That's our show for this week. Thanks so much to our sponsors and most especially to you, those who subscribe to the Kitsap Sun. We couldn't do this without you. See you next time.